I'm actually often surprised how much people don't believe the words that are in the song, that they come from a true right place. It's easier to doubt, I think, and be critical and cynical or something rather than mm. believing that it's true. Hi, I'm Mish Wei here with Broadly, and today we're going to interview the band Savages. Formed in London in 2011, Savages would soon project themselves to post-punk revival success with the debut of their highly acclaimed 2013 album, Silence Yourself. Known for their intense live performances, Savages have been described as completely riveting. Jenny Beth, Jenna Thompson, Aze Hassan, and Faye Milton proved their sound to be uncompromising. Silence Yourself went on to top the UK album charts, fulfilling the band's declaration to strike like lightning. Determined to understand one's own will and desire, Silence Yourself embraced a self-affirming voice that called for sexual liberation and stood against any temptation towards victimization. With a shift in tone, Savages moved forward with the release of Adore Life in January 2016. But this time they embraced the love of life, exploring the messiness of sexual discovery, power and fluidity, making the album a catharsis for emotions. Adore Life is about embracing one's desire and believing in love's transformative power. As the lead singer of a mostly female rock group, White Lung, I wanted to talk with Savages about their own experiences. Why is it a dumb question to ask what it's like to be a woman in music? I feel like with bands that are primarily women, I go through this too, where it's like, that's what's focused on, and it's really hard to get away from that question. Exactly. There's no right answer to it. Mm -hmm. And also, there's not a moment in my life where I'm asking myself that question. What if you would change a little bit the context of that question? Yeah. Um, Gemma, how does it feel like to be a woman when you're eating a sandwich? How does it feel like to be a woman when you're walking up the stairs? Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to it. What was the first music that really made you want to play? I think it would have been uh, Nina Simone for me. I remember my parents having a CD of her and she was like standing like that on the piano in the cover and I remember looking at that and hearing the music and asking myself, is it a man or is it a woman? I couldn't really yeah. identify, you know, it was mysterious. My family never really listened to music. You know, I yeah. used to stay up late and listen to John Peel on the radio and it was just a mixture of things and I used to tape what would either of you be doing if you weren't in this band? Be making some music in some other way. At a young age, did you know that's what you wanted to do? I didn't imagine that I would be a musician when I was growing up. I picked up a guitar to make noise, to make a soundtrack to something else I was doing, and then got invited to join a band as the noise guitarist. And from doing that, I started learning guitar. I remember there was a very specific time living in London when there was this real kind of indie thing going on, uh -huh. you know, oh God, with yeah. bands. And there were certain ideas about performance that I thought were missing or that I really wanted to see. And it's like I wanted to see some kind of mm. blood on stage. You know what I mean? Someone that meant what they did. The stage for these bands were not the priority. Mm -hmm. What they wanted was to have a hit single or to have... So then it would be very boring to watch them play mm. because they were safe. not... Yeah, like twee safe and you're like, come on, do, do something. There was suddenly this kind of need to try and create something to fill that gap, you know, and it's like I couldn't imagine doing anything else now mm -hmm. after I realised that that needed to be done. We've always wanted to find an approach to our show that is not conventional if we can. We've never had any colours on lights, for example. I remember having like a clear thing where it was never going to be a cold, savage show. So once you have that, you don't need the artifice because you're looking for something else. It all stems from, I think, a kind of necessity of performing from the beginning in a way. You know, we kept everything very minimal, so it was about the actions and about yeah. music and mm. about the sound. Actually, it's funny, me and Gemma realised after we met that we moved to London the same month within the same year. Yeah, and before we met each other, we went to a lot of the same gigs some of these shows that we went to, they were like really influential gigs for us. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. to see Liars, to see Hate Rock. Interesting Zain and I both. Yeah, the, the Forum. Are you guys happy to be touring again? I think we've been dying to do it for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. no bullshit on stage. It's just you, your music, mm -hmm. and the reason you do it. So yeah. it's the best it's place to be. That's what this band's kind of, everything is for being on stage. 
When we wrote the record, we did like a three week residency in New York and we kind of said to the people, we're going to be trying to play new songs, you know, like sketches of songs and you're going to be part of that, you know, and it was very much the idea of these people right here and us right on that stage, you know, forming the songs. There's a real chance of failure with that yeah. kind of thing, you know, because you're opening yourself up. You had to gauge the reaction to, to move it forward and it mm. moved things forward a lot quicker than if you're just by yourself. Did you change a lot of the things? Like how much did that really affect what you were working on? Well, in between shows, we would uh, uh, go back to rehearsal room and rework on parts and rethink yeah. of a new set, rethink of orders, and then go back to the next show and work that out again, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. That like seems it. like a very intimidating process. But that's the way we work, though. Like, we yeah. love that little rush of adrenaline. So for the new album, I know you went with the same producer as last time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We worked with Johnny Hostile with this record again because he knows the band so well and us as people and as musicians and how we approach our instruments. He's the kind of person that you can try and describe how to get a, a weird sound from in abstract terms and he would understand, Yeah. you know, he would go there, you know, in any weird thing yeah. to try and find it. And that kind of makes it in a way. I adore life. Tell me about the idea behind the concept of the video. The idea came from the desire to work with Tobias Freilander, who is mm -hmm. a lighting designer and really good friend of ours, mm -hmm. who we're working with also for the live shows. So the concept pretty much came from him, and the idea, I think, was to do something very simple and straightforward. Something that would show us the way we are, with no artifice. Well, it's really striking. I mean, did you feel vulnerable at all having this sit there? Yeah, and just, yeah. yeah I think we, we, it, it, it's hard for us to watch this video because it's so us. Like. <laughs> do you write all the lyrics? Uh, I do, yes. Yeah. Okay, what was going on in your life when you were writing those lyrics? You're touring all around the world. You, 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 you have an amazing connection with your audience that is really starting to build up and you want to find a way to put into your music something to give back, something that is, could be useful to people. That plus, you know, your own personal shit <laughs> that's happening. And I think the idea of change is really important on this record, maybe. Right. A personal change. Mm -hmm. The idea, yeah, you, you make mistakes, but you need to fall back on your feet. So to accept that part of you that is wrong. Yeah. And the fact that you're very vulnerable and that's okay. And mm -hmm. I think accepting this part of you that is very fragile in a way. Mm -hmm. But using that as a strength. 